Good. Okay. I'm ready. We're here with Javier Arau, saxophonist, composer, and director of the New York Jazz Academy. And Javier is what I would consider a, a linchpin of the uh, Jackson Heights Jazz Festival. He's performed every year so far, and we love having him and uh, always interested to see what he's going to come up with next. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Javier, uh, I'm going to ask you the same five questions that we've been asking all the other performers. Sure. Um, first of all, when and how did you develop a love for or a desire to pursue jazz? Oh my goodness. Okay, so jazz, I really think people get the jazz bug growing up right around age 13 or 14. That's it. If you reach that point, if you have kids out there, you might notice somewhere around 13 to 15 years old, that's when the jazz bug might bite you. And I, look, I grew up in Sacramento. It was a really great jazz scene in California. And I might have been bitten a little bit earlier, but by the, I guess by the time I was 13, I was practicing the alto and tenor like crazy. And that, that was it. You know, it was, um, I, my ears couldn't handle Coltrane yet, but they could handle Dexter Gordon. Eventually, I grew into handling more and more, and it's a process, but yeah, yeah, right on. Excellent. And what made you choose your main instrument? You know, I didn't choose saxophone to start with. So I, I was the youngest of four. I started on piano lessons, and then I, my brother, my older brother, who's still a saxophonist, uh, started on saxophone. So I didn't want to play that. So... I, we had a family friend who said, Javier, start on clarinet. It's harder than saxophone. And then if you ever want to switch to saxophone, it'll be a piece of cake. So I started clarinet when I was nine. And then in seventh grade, I made the switch to saxophone. And that, that was only something because I thought that I could start seventh grade playing clarinet in the jazz band. Because if Benny Goodman could do it, why not? And I found out there are no clarinets in school jazz band in, in Sacramento. That's the way it is. I was devastated. But that just meant a really easy change to saxophone. And I still play clarinet, but you know, saxophone is something I was really drawn to as soon as I started it. What album do you connect with the most on an emotional or spiritual level, and that's jazz or otherwise? Whew. Okay. Um, well, otherwise, you got to take a listen to the second movement of Beethoven's fifth piano concerto, the Emperor Concerto. That kills me every time. I don't think there's a greater melody out there. It's something exquisite. Along those lines, Beethoven in general, his piano sonatas, um, Mahler symphonies are, are a big inspiration for me. Um, in jazz, um, in some ways, uh, it took me a while to get to straight ahead jazz, but once I got there, I went deep. Um, I've always thought of George Garzon as being one of my heroes, and he really does come out of the Coltrane school. Um, as a player, for whatever reason, I, I tend to gravitate toward a, a more of a Texas tenor type of sound. Um, and it's funny, that goes for my alto playing too, even though, you know, there's no such thing as Texas alto, but there is something about the way that I embrace the music that I think does kind of, um, I don't know. There's, to me, there's something oddly Southern about it, considering I, I'm, I'm a Northern California boy, but anyway, who knows? You know, it's <laughs> funny how inspiration strikes. And is there anyone recording that you, you're drawn to? Well, the, f the first jazz recording that I went all in on was Sonny Rollins' Saxophone Colossus, and I learned every note on that album could sing the whole thing I still probably could <laughs> but um, among George Garzon albums this album alone is pretty spectacular so yeah awesome thank you sure which music teacher or mentor had the greatest impact on you and your musicianship Whew. which music teacher had the greatest impact This is a tough call, but you know, I had um, a really, really great opportunity to study full force for two years under Bob Brookmeyer, the great arranger, composer, and, and jazz musician. Um, 
and he really helped shape my entire artistic approach to uh, composition, to improvisation, to jazz style and swing. Um, there were certain elements about Brookmeyer's um, teaching that were so hard, so concrete, so unforgiving, but he approached it with such love and passion that he saw results in me and his other students, and we all loved him tremendously. I think um, having the um, really privilege to study with someone who is such a part of jazz history is something just gorgeous to me. And, you know, um, obviously we can't go back. So every time we lose one of these greats, we're not gaining another one. It doesn't work that way. You know, these are originators in this art. And uh, so that's something pretty special. Um, Brooke Meyer helped me understand what it means to play swing eighth notes, really what it, what it means to elongate your line and to add in artistic development into a line, to move jazz beyond pattern and formula and into something that is really lasting and really um, in the moment, I think, is something um, that he really stressed. And I, I love that. I, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever play a line as great as one of Bob Brookmeyer's, but it's really inspiring. And finally, uh, what do you love most about living and performing in Jackson Heights? Woo! So, people say, uh, what, do, what do we love about Jackson Heights? We love the food, right? That's the thing that most people say. Maybe they say we love the, um, the mix of cultures. Okay, I... I concur, but you know what I really love about Jackson Heights? I love that it is truly a neighborhood. I mean, that's exquisite to me. It's a, it's a safe environment for um, uh, me, and uh, I'm raising my children here, and um, it's vibrant. It's, you can walk into any store and get to know people if you're courageous, or if you wanna stay silent, you can, but the, the neighborhood, um, possibilities are endless, you know, and I think that's really something special about Jackson Heights. Well, thank you very much, Javier, saxophonist, composer, arranger, and leader of the uh, New York Jazz Academy. Um, any parting words, Any anything coming up that we should know about, projects? Well, you know, I gotta tell you, something about Jackson Heights that I hope is really special to people is this burgeoning music scene that we have here and I really encourage you if you're watching this I really hope you get out to hear more concerts in Jackson Heights it's a, a less and less of a secret that there's really really great music being made right here in your neighborhood so it's a stone's throw from Manhattan if you're in Queens you don't need to think about Queens being a sleepy place there's such vitality right here in the city in Jackson Heights and we have um more and more venues opening that are supporting live music and you know it's different than any other live music i guarantee it when you go to hear a group in jackson heights there's going to be something really really special about it whether you're going uh to terrazza which is the premier jazz club here terrazza seven uh if you're going now now there's even the newest joint the queensboro which have a great cocktail they're fantastic but it's really nice to see them supporting music, of course, Espresso 77, and really uh, the Jackson Heights Library, where I've been promoting um, uh, music and, in, and family events. You know, that's uh, beyond just what we offer. They do offer other concerts there year-round, so that's something to check out. So go Jackson Heights music! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Javier. Sure thing.